Hello and welcome back to RC Icons. So in this video we're going to build the RC10 World's Car. So this is just off the heels of finishing the Dynastorm. Um, I couldn't decide between the two. I wanted to build the couple of, or at least one two-wheel drive race buggy. And uh, I actually went to my storage unit um, to get this one. And <laughs> happened to be looking at my Dynastorms at the same time. and was like, you know what? I'm going to build one of those too. So we literally just finished a Dynastorm, and I'm going to dive right into the world's car, because it's the same time period. So the Dynastorm was released December 8th, 1992. This was released in 93-94. Uh, so Brian Kin Kinwald won the IFMAR in 93, and the world's car is supposed to be a replica of the car he drove in that IFMAR race. Um commemorating team associated winning four out of five of the ifmar races um to that particular time period so they won what did they win 85 they won they did not win 87 89 they won 91 they won and 93 they won so this was supposed to be kind of like a tribute car um for brian kinwald's um ifmar win so it was re-released geez 2014 maybe 2017 somewhere in that area area they re-released the car and they made some changes to the car when they re-released it um the primary ones are they uh, they still use the stealth transmission from the original car but they upgraded the uh, slipper clutch so they did like a v2 or a version 2 slipper on it and then they also changed the shocks. So the original shocks have a have a screw on shock collar, like a lot of the like a lot of the cars back in the day. Um, whereas the Riri has a has a threaded shock collar on it. And then um, I know they had I know they had uh, UJ's on the re-release. I'm not sure if they have it on the original. Um, we'll find out when we build it. But uh, yeah, so I really. After getting the body in, I showed the body in one of my previous videos that I had bought in from Todd. It's a guy in the U.S. who's doing bodies up, RC-10 bodies. He's selling them on eBay. Um, I've been wanting to build this car since I bought the kit. Now, I paid a fortune for this kit. If you're not familiar with RC-10s, they're through the roof. I mean, they're like Predator X-10s now. It's just insane. Um, you want to buy a new in-box kit, the Riri is going to cost you almost as much as an original. So a Riri World's Car uh, literally just sold the other day. It was like twelve or thirteen hundred, um, and an original upwards of sixteen to two thousand. So I actually won this at auction on eBay, but I did pay a fortune for it. Um, but I wanted original, to be honest. I wanted an original for the collection, and I'm not an RC10 guy, but I still paid a boatload of money for this car, um, just because I want. I've got a championship edition car that's almost mint that's behind the cabinet, but I really wanted the world's car to go along with that and then uh at some point i'll add a graphite but that'll be it i don't even know if i'll get the original rc10 i just it you go down that road right and before you know it you've got a b2 a b3 a b4 and it just keeps going so at some point you kind of have to draw a line in the sand so i figured if i had at least a gold pan i had a world's car with a black pan and i had a graphite then for me in my vintage collection and what what, what i'm looking for then i've covered it um, a lot of people would say that I'm absolutely crazy for building this kit just because of how much they cost is what it is. I bought it to build it. So we're going to build it in this episode. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm going to bring the camera over. I'll show you the kit. There's no real presentation to it, right? This was a race buggy even back in the day. It's not like a Tamiya kit where, you know, they were building it or selling kits based on, um, you know presentation and hobby grade so where you opened it up you were wowed by the blister packs this is like a trf kit that you would buy modern day um everything's just thrown in the box nothing special so i'll bring the camera over i'll show you the fact that everything is thrown in the box there is a bunch of vintage literature in there so we'll flip through that real quick just because i think it's cool as hell and then uh, we're going to get into the build see you in a second so as we look at the box you know, it does have a little bit of wear and tear on it, but it's actually not in bad shape. You know, it's got the authentic 
the authentic the authentic uh, sticker on it saying that it's a world champion replica but it's from 1993-94 now back then the world's car cost you $337 it's a lot of money back then one of the ways you can tell the difference between the world's car and the Riri um, the Riri has the, the wheels in one separate bag and the tires are in another bag Is your old school stealth transmission so yeah all the parts are just thrown in here so at some point I'm gonna paint the original body um, and I'm gonna paint it probably so there's your original body it's got a driver figure in there um, I'm probably gonna paint it more in line with the J Concepts livery with the fluorescent yellow drips. Um, that was the whole reason I bought that one. We're not going to need the body, so we'll get that right out of our way. Chassis is a little bit dirty, but no, no real scratches on it, which is nice. We're going to have to be careful as we build it and make sure there's nothing sitting underneath it. And then we've got, so these are our original shocks, right? Non-threaded. We've got all our parts bags, arms, nose clip, couple carbon fiber pieces, shock, front shock tower, our silicone. I've never built an RC-10 before, so it'll be interesting. Our aerial, <laughs> won't need that. Like headlights, battery cover, battery tray. It's got some bushes in there. Body mounts. Our zip ties. Now I have an inventory disc kit, so hopefully everything is in here. It's even got some uh, double-sided tape from back in the day. Wonder if that still sticks. tool Teflon coated Teflon piston oil filled shocks so a lot like the uh, Dynastorm so it gives you some setup directions for the world's car world's car race world RC 10 world's car race setup and info sheet so that's cool we've got our decals which are very simple small we've got our parts RC 10 world's car parts list gives us all of our parts as well as hop-up parts and then it gives you a kind of a quick breakdown of the stealth transmission and the uh, chassis components so just exploded views the shocks there's that bolt-on shock collar you can see there that got changed in the uh, Riri Associated kits, just a brochure talking about their team car, their championship edition. That's the one that I have. Some of their RC10Ls, their 10T, their 10GT, which was the nitrous version, right? Just cool stuff. And then this, this did not come with like a real manual. It came with a photocopied manual, but that's all right. So it's probably going to take me a second here to get the manual in order. But there's another parts list from back in the day. So it looks like this is page one, page two. Page three gets into inventorying the kit. Page four is your table of contents. And page five looks like you start getting into the build. 
So I'm going to get started here working on the chassis. It looks like we start working with the chassis and the bell cranks. Um, I don't know how this I don't know how this works um, as far as the bags go. I don't know. I don't know if it's in order or not in order, but I'm sure we'll uh, we'll find figure it out as we go. I know I need the nose piece to start. It doesn't look like it's in order, and it's funny because packaged by IP so every every kit that Associated did back then the person who packed the kit the initials are on in the bags so I know we need that where did I put those body posts that stealth transmission bag is open and there's hardware flopping around in there so that's always good hopefully everything is in there and someone didn't pinch something out of it so yeah, let me get this figured out and I'll bring you back when I have something to show you. There's the bell cranks. See you in a second. So that's steps one and two done. The nose cone is on with the body mount and the bell cranks are in. Um, that one can probably be loosened just a little bit. Right, so we're going to move on to step three which is getting the front shock tower together. Um, supposedly I'm supposed to be working off of these two bags. It says bag A-AA -A, but those bags weren't weren't labeled for the most part and I know the front shock tower is in this bag. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know. We're just gonna keep pushing our way through it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit different just because I don't know this no it it shows bushes in the steering but um but some of these parts are all they're in this bag now. So I'm I'm kinda jumping around from bag to bag. I think the biggest thing is just making sure the hardware ends up in the right places. So I'll bring you back when I have something to show you here. So that's step three done. Front shock tower's on. So it has you put a couple of ball, uh, ball ends on. Get your shock um, bolts through the upper tower. Or the upper, um, yeah, the upper shock tower. And then it has you get your, it's essentially your arm, your, um, Having a mental blank, blank, your pins are going to go through those two, to those two brackets. If you look at the picture, it shows three holes down at the bottom here. If you look at the actual shock tower, that outside hole is missing. There's only two holes: one for the actual nylon piece and one for the ball, the ball end. So that's the first thing I've noticed. Again, I don't know. This might be a re-re manual. I don't know. Everything everything seems to be okay so far, but uh, I have to. I definitely have to keep going back to the hardware list to match the one to one to match up the hardware. So now we're gonna start putting together our hubs and and uh, uprights. So our C hubs are here. And our steering, ar steering arms, or, what, or whatever you want to call them, are here. Steering blocks is what they call them. So we're going to start getting that put together. We've got our axles here. So I'll, uh, I'll get this assembled. It has us getting, getting that assembled. And then getting the arms onto the arms. And then actually attaching the front arms to it so I'll probably get us to here and then I'll bring you back all right front arms are on feels good knuckles are built um, nothing overly difficult um, I think it's harder to actually find the parts than it is to actually assemble the car is mostly nylon um, the parts 
It seems like it's like a nylon-y plastic. Which is fine. It just uh, it just goes together different than like a Tamiya or even a Kyosho. Um, those just kind of fall together. Everything is very precise and butter smooth. And um, this is not. You're kind of forcing stuff in. Um, it fits, but it you got to fiddle with it a little bit. It doesn't just slide together, um, which is kind of what I'm used to. So it is what it is. It's going together, okay. It's just it's just different. So the next step is transmission build. So it looks like we're gonna get into building the stealth transmission before we start getting the rear end together. So obviously the stealth transmission bag is the one that I said had a hole in it. Like someone opened it up and you can see that there's loose baggage parts kind of flopping around in there so uh, it is what it is I'm probably going to get out a couple of buckets and uh, try to make some sense out of this here get this in in some tubs so I'm going to get this cleaned up oh there's this there's all the tools I was looking for I had to go down I couldn't I couldn't find standard I do have some standard um, hexes, but I needed a wicked small one for set screws to hold the axle in, and I couldn't find one. But looking, look in the transmission bag here, and there's all kinds of. I was wondering too. I'm like, they have to have Allen wrenches in here. Sure enough, find them after you've already ripped your garage apart looking for the one you needed. It'll be nice to have them for the rest of the build. Huh. So, this is the one I needed. It's just tiny, tiny for a grub screw. So yeah, I'm gonna get, let me get this cleaned up and I'll start, I'll bring you back when I have something on the transmission put together. Alright, so I just finished the transmission. Um, that bag was open, like I showed you. One part missing. <laughs> Most important part, the drive pin. For the slipper clutch so it goes down in here and then um the directions are definitely for the riri so this is the v2 version so i literally had to go to this sheet that's in here gives me a breakdown and this is the original um so i forgot to fit the dust shroud in between the two which isn't a big deal because i need to put i need to order one of these the 6572 drive pin I'm going to need to get one of those. And when I do that, I'm going to have to slide this off. Then I can put this in, get the drive pin in. This actually kind of holds it until this gets pressed up against it. But that's it. It's silky smooth like you'd expect. The ball diff went together absolutely gorgeous. Um, let me see if I can... So this is the ball diff here. Just like any other ball diff. Um, I forget how many balls there was. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, twelve balls in the ball diff. I know a shoemaker, I think, is fourteen, but it goes together just like just like we're used to for the period stuff. Um, so that got put together first, and then I followed the directions for the stealth, the V2 stealth. This is where I started, because these parts, this gear was together already, and the bearing slid on, to, but it's all assembled already, and so is your uh, your spur gear shaft. It was assembled already in this kit. This kit, you have to put that together. But everything else is essentially the same, only it doesn't have the dust route anymore. And then this is completely different. So this is a single slipper. This is a double slipper, obviously, for that more power. But... We're past that point now, so that's good. So the next step is going to be putting the rear shock tower together, which is right here. I knew I knew that these directions were not the correct ones when that when that front shock tower wasn't showing all the same amount of holes. Um, rear shock tower, everything appears to be the same. So we're going to start moving forward with the rear shock tower. I'm going to put this over here. Um, we're getting to the sharp end of it here, which is, which is good. I 
feel like this should be going into uh huh, to seal something. See, part part of this too is you're just kind of figuring it out as you go. Um, this covers this, right? <laughs> I almost threw that out. So yeah, let me start building up the rear shock tower, and then I'll bring you back when I've got something to show you. But the rear end's gonna come together here pretty quick. It won't be too long. We'll be doing uh, shocks, which will be essentially the end of it. See you in a second. All right, so I figured I'd bring you back. So I did steps. It's not really like that. It's I did page nine. So it's rear bulkhead, step one, two, and three. So I did the rear shock tower, got it attached to the rear bulkhead. The bulkhead's a little bit different. I have to keep going down to my exploded view because this is the re this is the reread directions. And there is quite a bit different. The bulk rear bulkhead's different. It tells you to cut it for a more authentic look. Well, ours is mine has the more authentic look. So here I've got three three positions, whereas the re reread gives you nine. And then the screws are a little bit different sized. But essentially, rear shock tower mounts to the rear bulkhead, and then the rear bulkhead attaches to the chassis, and then the gearbox attaches to the chassis, and then the rear body mount attaches to the gearbox, and then the two mount together with the wing, with the wing tubes. So this is where we're at. So there's your rear body post attaching the rear bulkhead to the transmission. And then there's your rear bulkhead attached. And you can see we only have three screws here. Whereas that picture of the re re showed nine. And it tells you to cut it off for a more authentic look. So it must stick out a lot further. So starting to look like something. Right? We just need some rear arms and it'll look like more of something. So the next step. It, was, it would have been hard for me to show you anything more than what I did in, in that just because it's a little fiddly putting it together. So the next step is putting the rear arms together and attaching it, it looks like, to the actual chassis. So it's a two-piece it's a two-piece mount system where the bulkhead actually attaches its screws to the chassis so your rear arms see ya this is what I mean when I say it's it goes together a little tighter than a Tamiya or a Kyosho. And there's fleshing on all these parts. Like, not just a pip. There's like fleshing on all the parts. So essentially, this pins to this, right? That makes your hinge. And then this bolts to the chassis from underneath. So your arms are bolted to this on the chassis versus like running through a bulkhead. So we'll get this made up. Get the rear arms made up and screwed to the chassis. And then it's got us putting our UJs in. So that's our original associated old school UJ for the rear end. So let me get some of this built up here, and then uh, I'll show you what I've got here in a second. So that was a pain in the, literally a pain in the ass. Like, terrible. Like, I was ready to just give up. So... I should have showed you before I fit it to the car. So no drive pin. It's a roll pin that goes through the UJ. A roll pin. Right? So I do not have roll pin punches. And even if I did, 
you are not hammering that tiny little roll pin through while trying to hold it vertical on a UJ that's spinning on two bearings. Absolute nightmare. I literally had to use a pair of linesmen's crimp the end in so that it so that it caved in so that you could even get it started so that you could come up on top and use it as a press to press it in. Friggin' nightmare. I haven't sworn that much in four years of building RCs to be completely honest. But we're past that point. The arms are the uh, uprights are in. Now we need to make our turn buckles. So that's the next step. So we're gonna make up some turn buckles for the front. We're gonna make up some turn buckles for the rear. We're gonna make up some turn buckles for steering. And then we're gonna start our shock assembly. I'll bring you back when I've calmed down. <laughs> so I figured I'd bring you back. I finally got to the point to where I had to print out an original manual. So I got all the turn buckles made and installed. Um, so those are all in. Steering is done, uh, except for the rod that goes from the bell crank to the actual servo. Rear arms, uh, upper arms are made and on, nice and free. So the next step is the shocks. So in making the turn buckles, I, I broke one of the ball ends it snapped off and these are like a clear translucent so I went on eBay to see if I could find some and there's an auction ending tonight for a full set of original RC10 rods with the translucent white rod ends it's at $24 right now I'm the highest bidder and I'm the only bidder so I'll continue to watch that and I'll make sure that I win the only other option is original white one some guy has 12 rod ends so 12 white plastic rod ends buy it now any guesses on the price no 350 bucks for that <laughs> guys smoking crack um i can buy new white plastic ones or repop ones for two bucks but i really don't want to do that for an original car you can see on the car the rod ends in you can see where the rod end actually ends right you can see and i don't want there to be one that's just white and you can't see it now i'm a purist i finally said it um because i do stupid crap like this all the time when I did the Ranger decals video, I had about 10 people saying, hey, do you want to sell those original 80 millimeter uh, decals? And I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. But, you know, I need you to understand that I paid a ton of money for those and you're better off to buy MCI. And I, I, I didn't want to offend anybody. I do stupid stuff like this all the time and I don't expect other people to follow in my lead. I'd rather just hold on to the decals, but I mean, those decals were over $100 for a set of original decals. Well over $100. Now, I do stupid stuff like that all the time because I'm an idiot, but I don't expect other people to do it. Um, I'm not going to pay $350 for 12 rod ends, that's for sure. So hopefully I win this auction tonight and I sort that issue. But I brought you back because I'm building the shocks. That was why I had to, I, I finally got to the point where I said, you know what, I got to find an original manual. So I'm printing, I printed it out. So original RC10 shocks, it comes with a shock tool. This is your parts tree and this is the assembly for your bottom um, to seal the shock. So I just wanted to go through it real, real quick just in case somebody's never seen an original set of shocks. I'm glad I got an original to be honest after building the car the Riri is quite a bit different. Um, it's small, small parts that are different, but it's quite a bit different in those small sections of parts, the shocks being the biggest one. So this is your RC10 damper tool. So you take this split washer, you put that on the tool first. Then you take a small plastic shim, that goes on the tool. Then you take red o-ring, that goes on the tool. Then you take the large washer, 
that goes on the tool. Then you take another red O-ring that goes on the tool. And then one more thin washer that goes on the tool. So now everything is in place. So now you take some shock oil and you just want just a tiny, tiny bit around that so that when you seat it, you don't pinch the O-rings or anything. And then now what you're going to do is you take your, your shock body and you turn it upside down and you get it inserted over that tool. And you give it just a little bit of pressure. And you see the tool start to protrude through and then you, then you give it firm pressure and push. And you hear that, that split washer set itself inside. So now everything is inside that. So it's not a two piece shock like a Tamiya or a Kyosho where you're putting stuff in the bottom and then filling the oil from the top. It all happens from the top. And these are awesome shocks, by the way. So now that shock body is ready for the actual piston to run through. Um, I'm not sure yet if there's spacers on the front or the rear. I haven't got to that point. The pistons are all made, um, ready to go. So on the top, there's just an O-ring, like a lot of modern day shocks that goes around the top part seats itself down and then the cap right cap spins on and that's the end of it so i just wanted to show that assembly i thought it was cool it's definitely different than what i'm used to so now we're going to get to the point to where we're actually putting the shocks together so it shows spacers two, two on one and one on the other so it gives us these other set of nylon washers uh, big small I'm sorry small medium and large so I'll read through the directions and figure out which ones get which and then um, it's got us putting the oil in the shocks as usual getting the ball ends on it and then actually getting our spring set in in place and then the shocks mounted so I'm going to get that done and then I'll bring you back and then we're literally down to just finishing up the battery tray and uh, getting the wheels and tires on it. So far so good. I'll see you in a second. All right. So I'm glad I printed off the old manual. The car actually goes together completely different uh, in the old manual versus the new manual. Uh, still the same in the end, but so... Bingo. Couple of things. Um, so I bought this kit, open box. It's been sitting around since 94, right? Boy, that dip feels good. Sitting around since 94, and it, you know, there was loose hardware in the stealth hardware bag. The stealth hardware bag was open. A couple of bags were questionable, and I was really concerned on whether or not I was going to have a full kit here. Um, with that being said, everything turned out great. So we have a complete car. A couple of things need to be changed and or fixed. So going back to a couple segments ago, we need the drive pin for that spur gear. Not a big deal. Um, underneath these two screws, I had to buy at the hardware store. So we were short those two screws. So this silver screw for the front nose was in the kit, but the rest of the screws are brass. Right, and this screw was in the kit, in the bag, and it was aluminum. Um, not sure if that's right or wrong, it was in a stapled bag. So these two stainless screws I put in there, those are actually metric screws. I was short two screws for the actual, um, for the actual um, hinge pins. The hinge pin brace or mount, I was short two screws. So when I put it together, I used one in each in the back, and then I went to the hardware store today and picked up two stainless ones. They're metric M4s. They're not, they're not the 832s that are supposed to be in there, but the 832s are actually a little bit bigger. So when I do source two brass 832 by half inch and I put them in there, it'll wipe out the M4 holes and it'll be fine. So not a big deal. 
So I did get the shocks fitted and built up. They feel absolutely awesome. I didn't lower the car at all. I did put it at its lowest settings, but I didn't lower it at all. And it's and it with no weight in it, it sits it sits all right. It's not it's not too high. Everything is tracked perfect. I definitely had to adjust all of the rods. None of them worked based off the re redirections. I don't know why that is. I don't really care. Um, as I was putting it together, I could see that toe in and stuff was messed up, but you can see the car, it, it's kind of hard to tell, but the, the car is actually set up perfect now. Uh, what else? So I had one front lock washer or lock nut. This was one of the nuts that was rolling around in the stealth bag. I had, I have one, not two. I had two extra shock nylon shock nuts so that's what I used on the front just for now until I source another aluminum one and then I'll take the black ones off although those are holding fine I mean they're 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 nylon they're not metal but they would probably be fine I mean they are not coming off unless you use a wrench so the car itself the chassis is done absolutely epic short of the servo and I have I have the servo mounts right here they're just going to go in the bag. So it does come with the speed the speed nuts. Um, I could have used those, but I didn't want the white contrasting on the yellow. I thought it would look funny. So we'll put all the leftover hardware and stuff like that aside and uh, for the time being. Boy, that car is awesome. So now I'm ready to get my pre-painted body on it and... Uh, I've got one more thing I've got to tackle. So uh, Associated being, you know, a race company and a race car in perfect fashion, they want you to fabricate your own wing mount. So they only give you a piece of piano wire and then they give you the directions for bending the piano wire for your actual wing. <laughs> Great. Um, so I am actually going to do this off camera right now. And then... Um, I may come back in this view, get the stuff cleaned up, come back in this view so that you can see the body on it up close, and then we'll change the view for the closing. So bear with me here another few minutes. I'm going to, uh, for you it'll be instantaneous, but I'm going to fly downstairs into my garage here and get this bent up the way it needs to be bent up, and then uh, I'll bring you back with a, with a finished car. See you in a second. Boom! Friggin' awesome. So that wind needs to be, wing needs to be flattened out. <laughs> I've got it way, I've got, I was afraid to bend it too far. So I'll bend it down here in a second. But that's the body on and fitted. Looks so sweet. Oh boy, I'm excited. So yeah, I, uh, I've been wanting to build this one for a while, to be completely honest. So yeah, I was excited to get going on it. I'm finding that body from Todd just made it so much easier for me because now I can paint the stock body at my leisure. And uh, it won't have, that didn't affect the build at all, right? So now I can put this baby on the shelf and look at it. And when I got the opportunity, I'll... Uh, I'll paint the fluorescent wing and we'll be in good shape. Let's see if that looks better. The whole bend in your own your own wing bracket. It's kind of a pain in the rump, but so that's way flatter than it was. Looks good. I got to get this mess cleaned up and I'll bring you back for a closing.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's probably, uh, I didn't look at the video to see how long it was. It seemed like it took a little bit of some time. Sorry, I'm out of breath for a two-wheel drive. Um, so I opened the box to put the extra parts back in, and what do I find? What do you think? The drive pin for the frickin' spur gear. <laughs> oh. And of course it's a roll pin just like the ones for the wheels, so those things suck. I don't know how they expect you to get it in. I'm going to have to get some roll pin um, drivers. Because there's a special, for those of you that aren't in mechanics, a roll pin is a hollow pin. It's like a piece of metal, flat metal that's spun in a circle. And there's a gap and as you press it in the gap tightens right and that's what makes that connection inside holds it tight I said a roll pin punch is the same size as the pin except it's got a little um, nipple that comes out of the end to fit inside that pin to kind of hold it in place as you tap it in you're supposed to use like a jewelry hammer on something like this in a car you're using a regular hammer but I'm going to have to order a roll pin punch to get that one in because it's going to be fiddly um, being in that scenario like that. But whatever, that's for another day. Another three hours or so and I'll find out if I have the original translucent white ball end that I need. Well, I'll have every turnbuckle on the car to be honest, which is fine. Um, I don't really plan on driving this much to be completely honest. I usually do a one run deal. I'll probably do the one run with this car, just because I've never driven an RC-10 before. And uh, I'm just going to tape the living shit out of the bottom of it. Excuse my language, but I do not want to scratch this chassis. The anodizing scratch is so easy on these cars that I just don't... I really am not interested in... This car cost me a ton of money. And to build it, I probably just threw $1,000 in the garbage just building it. Um, but it is what it is. That's why I bought it and I was excited to build it. And, uh, and I'm happy that I did. I don't regret it at all. But I don't want to scratch it like at all. Um, so it's gonna, it's gonna. I'm gonna have to be real careful. Um, that's the bottom line. The build itself was absolutely awesome. This I built this off the heels of the Dynastorm. So you know, you go from one epic two-wheel drive race buggy to to another. Now, the Dynastorm never won a world championship, to my knowledge. I know the Astute did with Jamie Booth. Um, but I, I don't think the Dynastorm ever won a world championship, although this thing, it's got some pedigree, right? So to build two back-to-back -back is just absolutely awesome. With that being said, I'm ready for a front bulkhead <laughs> or gearbox. I'm ready for a four-wheel drive. So I'm not sure what's next. I'm probably going to do the winger restoration next, so that'll be another boomerang chassis, but at least it'll be four-wheel drive. Um... But yeah, it was just absolutely awesome. Um, can't complain at all. I really can't recommend getting one to you. And I don't do recommendations anyways. But the prices of these new in box now because they stopped making them and they announced that they're never going to make them again is absolutely through the roof. $1,000 plus all day long for a Riri or an original. And the prices that people are asking for originals, now not even World's cars, just any of the Pan cars. Any Black Pan team car, Black Tam Pan World's car, Graphite, um, the the Gold Pans, the regular, the first one, the original, and the championship. If it's if it's a aluminum panned car, not truck, but car, new in box kits, thousand dollars and up, no question. Um, the cars themselves, 500 and up all day long. Um, no question. I've been trying to find a graphite without, you know, remortgaging my house and it's been a little bit, um, it's been a little hard because I don't want one that's completely scratched to hell on the bottom. I want it to be a decent, um, example. Uh, and I am going after one that finishes tonight. Now this video is going to go out sometime in January. Right now it's December 11th. I announced the uh, Top Force giveaway yesterday. So I've been working on this the whole time. The emails have started to come in. I think we're over 300 now. By the time you see this, it'll long be over. But 
It's been uh, it's been an awesome weekend of comments. It's been an awesome weekend of emails, and it's been an awesome weekend of building. And then this past week was an awesome week of building as I wrapped up the dinosaur because I built that last Sunday. Enough rambling. The video's long enough, Keith. So, are you subscribed? You should be because of the Top Force giveaway. You should all be subscribed. That way you can win some of these cars. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Come on. It doesn't cost you anything. And you can win some cars. It's a win-win. Turn the bell icon so you don't miss any of the videos. Make sure you hit the all bell. That way you're notified every Wednesday and every Saturday of the videos that are coming out. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know you like the video. I know my videos are long, but they are what they are. This is a documentary. And a lot of you seem to not mind it. Um, fast forward through it if you have to. Whatever. I don't care. You know what I mean? But for me, it's a, I want to be able to go back and watch this stuff later. So I only get to build it once, but I can watch myself building it a million times. So that's what it's all about. Thank you for your support, honestly. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Thanks.